119. Psalm 119, we're going to do the next section. The next section is, um, is, starts in verse 9. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. With my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in mine heart, that I might not sin against thee. Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. With my lips have I declared all the judgments of thy mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of thy testimonies, as much as in all riches. I will meditate in thy precepts, and have respect unto thy ways. I will delight myself in thy statutes. I will not forget thy word. Again, we uh, move forward in Psalm 119. The whole psalm is about the word of God, right? It's got one theme. That's what the entire uh, chapter is about. It's not really a chapter. It's a psalm. And uh, just to re in way of review, we talked last time about the way of God, the, the, the way of blessing, I think we called it, because verse 1 says, Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. And we compared that to the New Testament where Jesus said that there is a straight gate and a narrow way that leads to life, that that is the way, and that narrow way corresponds with what, what David or the author of this psalm is saying is the law and the testimonies and the statutes and the commandments of God. It's a straight way, meaning it's a, it's a constraining way. It's a, almost a hindering way, and, and that's a good thing, he says. He's, he's thankful to be able to walk in a narrow path the, because that is where the way of blessing is. And so uh, tonight we continue with this idea of a way, because verse 9 uses the same word. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? And so again, we're faced with this idea that there are two different ways. There is God's way, and it, we, he would insinuate here that that way is a clean way, it, to cleanse his way. God's way is a clean way, and that is a narrow way. The other way that is, a, that is broad, that is a wide gate, that would be the opposite of clean or defiled. That would be my way, okay? My way, the way of my own flesh is the opposite of God's way. Um, the, uh, the, and so he's talking about when, when somebody gets off of the narrow path, when somebody gets off of this way that is in line with God's testimonies and statutes and, and uh, this, this right way of blessing, how can a young man, or any man, probably the one writing it is a young man, but wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? How do you go from being on, on a defiled path, the, the broad way, to getting back into the narrow way or the way that God wants us to live. Now, I, I noticed a pattern with, um, with this second uh, stanza of Psalm 119, and it kind of goes in a cycle here. And what we discover then is that um, the ways that we're talking about here, my way versus God's way, they're not necessarily straight lines leading to a destination. It's a way of life, meaning that it kind of goes in circles. In, when you're on God's way, it's an upward cycle. And we're going to describe that here in just a minute. When, when you're on your way, it's the opposite. It's a downward spiral. And it's going to take you down, 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 down. And, and it perpetuates itself. It's hard when you get off the right path. It, it's easy to just keep that momentum going and not get right with God. Likewise, when you get on the right path and you develop good habits in your life, it kind of propels itself upward, you know, it, it kind of reinforces itself and, you know, when, when you start coming to church faithfully and you're reading your Bible faithfully and you're, you're praying faithfully and all of these things, it's, it's like it, it helps you just keep on 
making the right decisions. And it, it takes you in this cycle, circular pattern that is very good and very building in our lives. So let's talk first about, um, about God's way. Each cycle, uh, both of these that we're going to talk about tonight, have uh, three basic characteristics. There's, there's a priority with each one. And then each step is a part of a process. And then in everyone's life, there's evidence of a product of that way. And th these will make sense in a minute. I'm not just pulling P words out of the air. Uh, these, these will make sense here as we go. So first is God's way. What is the priority if somebody is going God's way? Well, look at verse 10. With my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. So the priority going God's way, the priority is seeking God first. The priority is to please Him rather than myself. Um, let's turn to a couple of verses of Scripture just in the New Testament to compare with um, these verses here about the priorities and keep your place in Psalm 119, of course, and turn to Matthew, Matthew 6. Matthew chapter 6, one of my favorite verses is uh, Matthew 6, 33. He says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. That doesn't mean everything will be added unto you. He's been talking about, um, you know, your clothing and, and food and shelter and the necessities of life. He says, you don't have to worry about all these things. You don't have to live for those things. You live for God first. Set him as your priority. And all of these, all these things, these necessities of life, those will be added unto you. Look forward in Matthew 22. Matthew 22, verse 35. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him. And saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So, you know, somebody might have been expecting Jesus to say, Well, Obviously, thou shalt not kill. Or, you know, pick one of the Ten Commandments, maybe, that, that would be the first and the greatest. He says, no, no, no. It, it, it boils down to what is your priority in life? Who is the, the first one that you love? Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and soul and mind. Um, Jesus said in John 14, 15, if ye love me, what will be the response there? Keep my commandments. Again, we get back to this narrow way of keeping God's commandments, of walking in His way, and then turn back to Psalm 119. When somebody seeks God with their whole heart, and, and that idea of whole heart, that's a, that's a heart that is undivided. It, it's, not, um, it's not wanting, oh, it's this, this thing and this thing, and oh, part God, and I want part the world. No, it's, it's just an undivided passion and pursuit of God. First, above, above anything else, nothing else even compares. And he says, with my whole heart have I sought thee. And because of that love, because of, he loved him first with his whole heart and soul and mind, he says, his, here's his desire, oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. It's the same message that Jesus was saying. If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. And, you know, the motivation for walking in God's way ought to be because we're seeking him, because we love him first. Sometimes people will walk a path that resembles God's way. They will toe the line. They will do all the right things, but their motivation is selfish because they're just doing it because, oh, things seem to be a lot simpler when I do things this way. I, I don't want to rock the boat. I don't want to make a scene. Or maybe even I like the image that it portrays upon me when I am walking on this path. 
That's certainly what the Pharisees were up to. They, you could say that they were very conservative in their, in their walk and in their standards and, and in everything they did. You could say, oh, well, they're, they're kind of walking the way, but they weren't because their heart wasn't in it. They, they didn't have this primary motivation to serve God. So the only way to, to really walk the way that God wants us to be on is to make sure that our priority is, on, is in Him. Now, what, what is this? Now, now there needs to be a process. There's a process to walking in God's uh, way. The process is taking heed to God's word. Verse 9, wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? How are we going to walk in the right way here? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. What's that have to do with? What's taking heed? It's not just listening to it. It's more than that. And it's... it's uh, uh, I, I said, first of all, here in my notes, uh, absorbing the word. You have to absorb it. You can't just hear it. You can't just read it. You have to absorb it. Uh, look at some of the, the steps that he outlines here as a part of this process. Verse 11, thy word have I hid in mine heart. That would be what? Memorizing. There, that's how we hide his word in our heart. We, we commit it to memory. Um, are you, you kids have been working on some memory verses in Sunday school? Can you give me a memory verse? Psalm 23. Can you tell me the first verse of it? Very good. Excellent. Good job. You know what that's doing? That's hiding God's word in the heart. Okay. Now, sure, we have Bibles accessible to us and so on, but as as we live, as we go about our business, when we're at work, when kids go to school, or they're with their friends, and some situation comes up, probably temptation isn't going to strike while you're sitting there in the pew uh, with your Bible in your lap. You know, that, that's not when it comes. It comes when you're away from church and you're away from all of this. And so then where's your weapon? Where's your sword? It ought to be hidden away in your heart, memorized. I challenge you to memorize Scripture. The Lord has worked on my heart about memorizing more. And I can memorize, we can memorize, if we put the effort into it uh, to actually do that. And a uh, matter of fact, you get, I'll tell you this so you can hold me accountable to it. The uh, Lord put on my heart to try to memorize the book of Philippians. Okay, so that's a, it's a personal challenge that, that I'm going to try to do. And you can follow up with me on that and say, hey, how's Philippians going? And see if I can recite part of it for you. But uh, you don't have to do that, but just pick a verse, you know, every week. Be working on something that you can, you can commit to memory and, and memorize it. Because when you memorize it, it forces you to pay attention to the words. It goes beyond the concepts and into the very words. And, and it makes you have to understand what, it's, what the meaning of it is so that you can catch, capture the flow so it's very important to memorize it as you absorb the Word of God. Uh, secondly is to, to learn it, to stay teachable before the Word of God. Look at verse 12. Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. As I absorb this, I, I don't want it to just be information. I want him to be teaching me. I want to continually uh, remain a learner before the Word of God that, that I never get to where uh, I can't learn anything more or that I don't desire to learn anything more. Part of this priority of walking in His way is and taking heed to His Word means we're going to learn His Word. Look at uh, verse 15. I will meditate in thy precepts. So meditate upon the Word of God to uh, ruminate upon it, to think about it, to roll it around in your mind and, and consider it from different angles and applications in your life. And then also to respect it. I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways. Um, I looked up that word to have respect and it, it means to, uh, to look intently upon, to regard, uh, to look upon with high regard. Uh, so it, it ought to be to where we literally have respect for it. Um, ought to have respect. Kids, you know, don't put your Bibles on the ground. That's just a way to 
respect the Bible, right? Don't put it underneath a pile of papers and other things. Try to keep your Bible um, up top. It's a way to respect it. But, but more than that, it's to live it. It's to, it's to take, we're taking heed to it. And that's, that's where we head next, is not just absorbing the word, but living according to the word. That's part of taking heed as well. It not only goes in, but it comes out of the life. Look at verse 10. He says, With my whole heart have I sought thee, O let me not wander from thy commandments. So, so as you absorb the word of God, it helps you to not wander from it, to, to help you stay on the path. It helps you not walk in sin. Verse 11, Thy word have I hid in mine heart, that I might not sin against thee. Look at verse 13. With my lips have I declared all the judgments of thy mouth. So all the judgments of thy mouth, what's that? That's another word for the Bible, the word of God, God's judgments. And what's he doing there? I've declared them. So not only are we to be learners of the word of God, we are also to be teachers of the word. What comes in should come out. We ought to declare it. And you say, well, where am I supposed to do that? Well, at home, that's a good place to start. You know, declare the word of God to your kids, grandkids, brothers, sisters. You know, just, just it, when it's in you, it will come out. It, it can't help but, but uh, speak the things that are front and center in your heart. So declare it to others. And then verse 16, I will delight myself in thy statutes. I will not forget thy word. I'm not going to forget it. This is all part of taking heed to absorb it and then to live according to it. Take heed according to the word. And then there's a, there's a product at the end of all this. So God is the priority. He is the one who, who we are seeking with the whole heart on this path. He's the motivation for it all because we love him. It's not just because I want to do right or because I, it, life is smoother that way. It's because I love him and therefore I want to please him and keep his commands. He's my priority. Here's the process. Absorb the word of God. Live according to the word of God. And then we find that there's a, a product that comes out, out in our lives. Let's look at uh, verse 12. The first product that shows up is blessing. He says, blessed art thou. Oh, Lord, teach me thy statutes. What's, what's blessed mean? Anybody remember? Blessed, blessed. Anybody remember? Happy, happy. And, and he's giving blessing to the Lord, but why do you think that is? Because he's been blessed. He is, he is saying, Lord, I'm blessed when I'm walking on your way. I want to bless your name as well. So blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. Verse 14 says that there will be joy in this life. I, I, I have rejoiced in the way of thy testimonies as much as in all riches. You kids like riches? Do you like treasure? Oh, yeah, we did the pirate thing last week, didn't we? We won't do that again. But uh, the, uh, you like treasure and you think about, like, uh, imagine if you opened up a treasure chest and it was just full of gold coins and you could just put your hand in there and, and it was real gold coins. Wouldn't that be amazing? And you dump them all out and you could make uh, gold angels, you know, and swim in the gold and all those riches and stuff. Would that make you happy? A little bit, right? David said, I found something that makes me much more joyful than all of that. And that is walking in God's way. I rejoice in the way of thy testimonies as much as in all riches. And then he says, uh, he, he delights in the way as well. Verse 16, I will delight myself in thy statutes. I will not forget thy word. And this is the stuff that everybody's searching after if they really focus on it in life. They want to be blessed. They want to be happy. They want to be joyful. And they want to have delight in life. And, and the psalmist is saying, this is the way. This is the way. This is the cycle that when God is your priority and you're trying to walk in his way, what happens is you, you absorb the word of God and you live according to it and it produces a product in your life of, of blessing and, and joy. And then 
when you are feeling delight in the Lord, you know what that makes you want to do? It makes you want to come back over here and absorb more of His Word and live more according to His Word. And when you do that, it produces rejoicing. And then you want to come back into it. Do you see how the cycle perpetuates itself? Look at, look at how it, it, is, it lines up here uh, in, in the verses. So he talks about, first, the, the way, in, in verse 9, taking heed to his word. So he says, With my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. So God is the priority. Let me not wander from thy commandments is over here on the, the absorbing and taking heed. And he says, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. And then what's he come up with? Blessing. Blessed art thou, O Lord. Immediately after blessing, he jumps back over. Teach me. Teach me thy statutes. With my lips I have declared all the judgments of thy mouth. And boom, I have rejoiced in the way of thy testimonies. Jumps back over on the, to the other side of absorbing the word. I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways. And that produces delight in thy statutes. And he wraps it all up by completing the circle. I will not forget thy word. Over and over again. I do this in the way of God. I absorb it into my life. I live according to it. And he produces these wonderful I, for lack of a better word, feelings in, in my life that, that he, he, he fills me with joy, he fills me with, with blessing, he fills me with delight because I know I'm pleasing him. I know I'm living according to the priority that is most important in my life. And it's an upward building cycle. Let me describe to you the opposite. The spiral of my way. It's the opposite of his way. It's not a clean way. It's a way of sin. It's a way of defilement. The priority is not God. The priority in that mess is me. It's not about pleasing him. It's about bringing pleasure to me, doing what I want to do. Look at uh, Proverbs 12. Proverbs 12, verse 15. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. That's his way. Uh, look at uh, chapter 14, verse 12. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of what? Of death. Go forward to the New Testament, to the book of James. James chapter 1 and verse 14. It says, But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. It's his own way. Look at 2 Timothy 3. Back up just a few pages. 2 Timothy 3, verse 2. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Lovers of their own selves. And that's where people are. And that when, whenever they are on their own way. The priority is me. Pleasing me. There's a process that goes with this one as well. The process to walking in... The, self, the way of self is to not take heed to the Word of God, but rather simply ignore the Word of God. Not to take heed, but to ignore. And when, but here's the problem. When you're not getting your counsel from the Word of God, you are getting it from somewhere. And so if somebody is not absorbing the Word, what are they taking in? The world. They're absorbing the world. The world's entertainment and music, and priorities, and, and philosophies, all of that is getting sucked in to that person's life. And all the same things are present as are present on the other side. There's a regard for the world. 
that, oh, it's, it's alluring, right? And, and there's almost a respect that comes with it. People start, start looking after the money and they start seeing people who are successful in finances and that is where they have respect unto. And, and, as, and then they meditate and they're thinking through the possibilities and maybe even thinking through some different uh, things that are temptations, different sins weighing their options. What are they doing? They're meditating. They're dwelling on those possibilities and they are observing the world and learning. Remember D David says over here, teach me thy statutes. If you're not doing that, if you're not taking heed to the word of God, you're going to the world saying, teach me how to be successful. Teach me how, how can I achieve this next rung on the ladder and you're, you're absorbing the world at that point and then what goes in must come out and you will act upon what you have taken in you will act upon those temptations you will realign those priorities you'll get out of the word because sin always does that sin keeps you from the book and the book keeps you from sin and you'll be walking in sin acting according to it not taking heed to the word but taking heed to the world and you know what that process has consequences as well they're not spelled out for us in our text, but you can think about some of them. When, when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and when sin is finished, it bringeth forth death. Death, destruction. What, wide is the gate, broad is the way that leadeth unto destruction, Jesus said. Okay? There's consequences to this as well. And on the inside, in, in a person's heart, there's guilt that comes with sin. There's remorse. There, there's, there's regret. There's emptiness. The Bible word is vanity. And we talked about that in the last, the last section. It talks about, uh, uh, about uh, chasing after vanity so, somewhere in there. Uh, but uh, vanity and emptiness that's in the soul because what you thought the world could offer didn't come through for you. So it's empty inside. It's miserable inside. It's everything opposite of blessedness rejoicing and delight and it's a circular motion because when people are empty inside and when people are miserable inside they go back to other types of sinful behavior that promise to satisfy them after all and they go in this self-perpetuating cycle of death and destruction in their lives and this is why such things exist as like gateway drugs, where somebody can start with something that seems fairly innocent, uh, maybe a, a tobacco or a marijuana or something, and then they come up empty. And, and when they fa face that emptiness gnawing at their soul, they have to come back over here and absorb more of the world. And it produces this cycle in the heart until when it is finished, it bringeth forth death. That is the way that our flesh would naturally take us on. That is the way of me. Both, both ways provide a cycle. And you say, okay, well, now what? I mean, let's say I'm off the path. Let's say I, I got off the straight and narrow and I've made some poor choices and, and I can see that in my life. I can see this downward spiral going, well, how am I supposed to fix it? How am I supposed to cleanse my way and get back on the right path? Verse 9. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto, according to thy word. <laughs> It's, 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 as, it's as hard and as simple as this. Start taking heed again. Get back to the Word. Get back to absorbing it and learning it and meditating and memorizing. And what, what goes in eventually will start coming out in your life and you'll, you'll begin living that way. And, and, and it's not like it's this immediate thing. It's not like the old seeds don't eventually come in either there are consequences for sin and sometimes they just can't be undone but I'm telling you you can get off of your way and you can get back on a clean way just by doing the new process of taking heed according to his word 
And that's what this, that's what this psalm is all about. It's, it's about these ways that are before us, these choices that life presents us with. And, and you basically, it boils down to, you're going to heed this or you're going to heed the world. There's your choices, folks. And if you're, you're pouring yourself into this, and this is what's coming out of your life, you mark it down, there will be blessing, there will be rejoicing, and there will be delight. Will there be hard times? Of course. Will there be tears? Of course. I'm not talking about some fakey, plastic Christian smile. That's not what we're going for. We're talking about true blessing, true joy, and delight, not in us, not even in our way, but delight that we are on the path of the one that we are seeking with the whole heart. Does that make sense tonight? I, I hope it's a help to you and to, to be able to spot these cycles in Scripture that, boy, you come back to the Word and it rewards us. Come back to the Word and it rewards us. And so habits are, are easy. Uh, it seems like habits, once you get out of one, it's easy to stay out. As soon as you start to miss Bible reading or miss church or you, you decide to slack off in this one area on, as a part of the process, it's amazing how quickly this good cycle can reverse. It can happen just like that. It can happen within a day. And you have to always be course correcting and saying, oh boy, I got to get back in the way. <laughs> get back in the way. You know, they, they teach you how to drive, and, and you can always spot a new driver, you know, because they make big course corrections, right? And, and here's, here's the Christian life. Always be making corrections. You know, always, always little, simple things. You don't have to wait till you're in the ditch to, to get back on the road, okay? It can be just a simple little course correction. Say, oh, Lord, my motives were off there. Guide me back into the way. Let's keep a short account with God. Get things right quickly. Because the longer you perpetuate this direction, the harder it is to get off that cycle. You just keep building, keep building this way instead. Take heed according to his word. Let's pray. Father, thank you uh, for giving us such, such simple advice in the form of this song. I'm sure it